Hi, I'm Zor. Welcome to a new Zor Education. Um, I'd like to start a new topic. Um, it's related to trigonometric inequalities. Well, first of all, which inequality can be called trigonometric? Well, obviously, <laughs> the ones which involve some trigonometric function. That's no big deal. Um, now, let me just spend a few minutes talking about general approach to uh, how to solve inequalities. So, let's say you have some function and you would like to solve inequality of this type. Now, we are talking about real function, real arguments, and real constant A. How this particular inequality, in general, can be approached to solve? Well, um, they will deal with smooth functions, uh, uh, continuous functions. So, if I will have the points which are solution to this particular equality, let's say points are x1, x2, etc., xn. So, there are n solutions to this particular uh, inequality, uh, equality, equation, equation. Then, look at the graph. If this is a function uh, f of x, and this is a, and I found these points where function f of x is equal to a, x1, x2, x3. So, it's obvious that for a smoothly behaving, behaving uh, function, we are considering only these uh, smooth functions. If I have, let's say, these two points, um, then the function in between these points should be either less or greater than this particular level, right? So, if at x2 it's equal to a and x3 it's equal to a and there is no in, no, no points in between where it's equal to a so these are two consecutive points where f at x is equal to a then in between it's either less or greater than zero so to find out where exactly these particular conditions are held we have to find the points where the corresponding equation um, uh, be becomes uh, an identity, and then examine all the intervals in between these points, less than x1 in this particular case, between x1 and x2, between x2 and x3, and greater than x3 in this particular example. So, this is an approach which we will take to solve trigonometric equations as well. So, if we have a trigonometric equation, we will um, try to solve the corresponding uh, uh, for in, if we have an inequality, then we will solve the corresponding equation, and then we'll examine the uh, the intervals in between the solutions of this equation. Um, it might be a little bit um, complicated by the fact that uh, trigonometric functions are periodic, which means um, the same uh, solutions to the same equations actually are numerous, countable number of times on each period. But that, that's not a big problem. We will just solve the equation on, on, on some interval, which is the, the basic interval, the basic interval of periodicity. And then we will just add the period to all the solutions which we will get within this particular interval. Okay, so that's the some kind of in, introduction to this particular lecture. Now let's go to particular examples. And um, um, so my purpose during this lecture to explain solutions of uh, inequalities like tangent of x less than or equal to a cotangent sine and cosine, basically, four, four cases. That's number one. Number two, I will usually use less uh, or equal, but it's a uh, trivially expandable to uh, less or, or, or greater or greater or equal or any other things. Uh, the difference is whether I will or will not include 
the points exactly where the tangent or sine or, or cosine equals to a. All right, so um, I will start with tangent, and uh, the reason is exactly the same as uh, my starting with tangent for uh, equation, because interval of periodicity of tangent is um, the same as equal of monotonic behavior and existence of the inverse function arc tangent, right? So if this is your tangent minus pi over 2, pi over 2. And the pi is the period. And this is exactly the interval where function tangent behaves monotonically. It's monotonically increasing. So I will solve the equation, uh, sorry, inequality on this period from minus pi over 2 to pi over 2. And then just add pi, which is pi, pi is a period, right? And in this case, it's very simple, actually. Because wherever uh, the A E is positive or negative, let, let, let's say it's negative, for instance. This is A. So this point is dividing the whole uh, interval of periodicity into two parts. On the left, I have below A. And on the right, from this point, this is the point. And uh, to the right of this point, to the end of the period, I have greater than A. So solutions to this particular inequality are very simple. Let's call well, th this particular point. What is this point? This is solution to equation, which is arc tangent A, right? So this is the point on, on the x-axis where tangent is equal to A. So what I can say about solutions to this particular inequality is that x should be, we need greater or, uh, we, we need less than or equal. So it's greater than minus pi over 2. It's not equal to pi over, uh, minus pi over 2 because it's undefined. And less than or equal to arc tangent of A. So this is an interval from this to this, where the function tangent is below or on the level of A. Now, the general solution obviously is like this. I add pi times n, where n is any integer number, to here and to here. And this is a countable number of intervals, this interval, then this interval, and this, and this, countable number of intervals, and each interval is a solution. So the, un uh, the, uh, the union of all these intervals is the solution. Well, that's it. It's simple with, with, with tangent, right? Now, let's go to cotangent. That's where it's as simple, actually. The period of cotangent is also pi, um, but it's better for me to examine uh, the function cotangent on the in interval from 0 to pi. It's also interval of periodicity. I mean, any interval which has the length of pi is a period of, it is a, an interval of periodicity. But why, why did I choose uh, this particular one? Well, because cotangent behaves monotonically. This is p over 2, pi over 2. Right? Now, on this particular interval from 0 to pi, tangent behaves, behaves mon uh, cotangent behaves monotonically. So, my inequality, now this is, let's now use the positive A. So this point is arc cotangent of A. One and only point where the equation has the solution. This is the solution. So on the left, 
from this point, uh, my function cotangent is above A, and on the right, it's below A. So if I need uh, the solution to this particular uh, inequality, I have to do it the following way. I have to, uh, we need less than or equal. So from this, x less than y. From this to this, not including the boundary. So the endpoint is not included here, but it, it is included in this case because there is an equal, uh, equal is acceptable uh, solution. All I have to do right now is, as before, add pi n to both sides. That's the general solution. It's exactly the same as in case of a tangent. It's a small interval within the period, and then I expand it to all the periods. And what's the uh, kind of simplicity in case of tangent and cotangent? Because the interval of periodicity, which in both cases is pi, is the same as an interval of monotonic behavior and existence of the uh, inverse trigonometric function for any uh, real value a. So no matter which a I choose, I can always find this particular uh, solution to this particular equation. So there are no, there are no restrictions, basically, on a or, or anything else. And it's easy to deal with monotonic behavior. It's just one um, inequality. OK, situation with sine and cosine is slightly more complex. And let me explain you why. Let's approach again this graphically. Now, in case of, um, well, let's say with sine. So I will consider sine on the minus pi to pi. Uh, not exactly symmetrical. Something like this. Minus pi to pi. Okay. This is sine. And we are looking for solutions to this particular uh, inequality. Well, first of all, it's obvious that if A is one or above, then every um, x would be actually the solution, because sine cannot be greater than 1. So let me just do it. Case number 1. If a is greater or equal to 1, then uh, x can be any real number. Now, second case. If a is less than minus 1, if it's below, below this level, less than minus 1, then no solutions. Because any x would be greater, and we need less than or equal. And only if a is in between these two boundaries, from minus 1 to 1, we can talk about some meaningful solutions, non-trivial solutions. I mean, everything is meaningful, but non-trivial solutions. All right, so... Let's examine a couple of cases separately. Um, and here is why. If A is less than 0, uh, uh, negative, the solution to this is one particular interval here, right? Only these are solutions. Now, if a is here, then I have actually two different areas uh, within the period where my sign is less than A. It's this interval and this interval. The whole this period, uh, the, the whole this interval, because from this to this, sign is below this line and above this. So let me do the third case and split it in two halves. 
if a is greater than 0, so a is above, I have two different uh, intervals, right? Now, this point is obviously arc sine of a. So my solution is from minus pi less than or equal to x to arc sine of a. That's one particular interval, right? And the second interval is, now this is exactly in length, this particular uh, interval is equal to this one. So it's pi minus, so it's uh, pi minus arc sine. So from pi minus arc sine of a, x, and 2 pi. These are two intervals we're talking about. And obviously I have to add 2 pi n, because in case of a sine, the period is 2 pi, right? I have to add it here and here, and here, and here. So for a greater than 0, this is the solutions. Now, and for, uh, yes, uh, what I mean is a is still uh, plus or equal to 1. It's not just greater, because these cases I have to. So it's from 0 to a to 1. And this is from minus 1, uh, yeah, you can put equals here, uh, to 0. Now, what happens in this case? So it's this case, when a is below 0, so I have only one interval. Now, what is this point? This point is arc sine, right? Because the interval of periodicity is from minus pi over 2 to pi over 2. This is interval of periodicity. And for A, this is arc sine. And it's negative, by the way. So how can I get to this point? Well, that's minus pi uh, minus arc sine of A, right? I have to move to the right. Now, arc sine is negative, so I have to subtract to move to the right. Uh, 2 arc sine. So that's the solution. All right? From minus pi minus arc sine that gives me this point and this is arc sine this is this point and again I have to add 2 pi n in both cases seems to be it. Now let's go to cosine. Now, the graph of the cosine is like this. It's symmetrical, also from minus pi to pi. This is pi over 2, and this is minus pi over 2. And the situation is basically very similar. That it all depends on the value of a. If a is greater than 1, again, Or even equal as well, then x can be any 
real number. Second, if A is less than minus 1, no solutions. Now, the third case, if A is in between minus 1 and 1. So this is minus 1 and this is 1. So if A is somewhere here. But you see, because cosine is a symmetrical function, um, no matter where I put this line, A, here, and in this case I have this interval and this interval where the function cosine is below A. Now if A is negative, I still have the same in the two intervals here, one interval with, where it's below A and another. So it's always two intervals. In, in the case of a sine, sometimes I have one interval, sometimes two. In this case, in, in case of a cosine, I always have uh, two intervals. So, what is the interval of periodicity um, I, I took, the minus pi to pi? What's the interval of monotonic behavior for a cosine? Well, we usually, traditionally, to have arc cosine, we, we take it from zero to pi. So that's where we should really look for a cosine, uh, for arc cosine. This is arc cosine. Now in this case, this is arc cosine. So arc cosine is always from 0 to pi. Okay? Now, how can I identify the left point? It's always minus pi. So it's always minus pi. And... Uh, the right point is minus arc cosine, right? If this is arc cosine, or this is arc cosine, then this is minus arc cosine. Um, minus arc cosine of A. So that's one interval. And the second interval is from arc cosine to pi. From arc cosine of A. To pi. So these are two intervals which are uh, describing all the values of x on this particular period from minus pi to pi where the cosine is less than or equal to a. And again, as usual, I have to add 2 pi n. So that's the solution. So what we have done, we have number one um, analyzed just a general approach how to solve um, inequality using the corresponding equation. So instead of finding where it's less or, or greater or whatever, we will find where it's equal and then all the points in between the equality are inequality. And we are definitely using the smoothness of the graph of the function. Um, now, and then we have analyzed uh, the behavior of functions tangent, cotangent, sine, and cosine, uh, and investigated uh, how to find what exactly are the values where these functions are less than or equal to some value. Um, and as I said before, to transfer it to another um, inequality, like greater or greater or equal or, or strictly less, it, it's trivial. So I'm not going to spend uh, time on this. Um, what's interesting is, again, that tangent and cotangent um, are a little bit more convenient in terms of their interval of periodicity is exactly the same as interval of monotonic behavior, so there is only one point where um, the corresponding equation um, has a solution. So it's always from uh, some edge of the interval of periodicity to this point, or from this point to another edge uh, of periodicity, and then you add the period. With the sine and cosine it's slightly more difficult because there are one or two intervals within the period, and it's all related to the fact that interval of periodicity is not the same as interval of monotonic behavior for both sine and cosine. That's why we had to consider different cases. 
Well, that's it. Um, I, I do recommend you actually to um, repeat again these um, little calculations which I did. And what's most important is uh, you have to solve the problems and uh, I will definitely have some problems following this particular um, lecture which explains just general theory. Um, there are numerous examples of uh, how to apply this knowledge and how to, how to train your, your mind to, to find uh, specific ways to resolve this or that particular inequality. These are simple, elementary ones. These are the end road when you are given a particular inequality to solve this is the very end. So whenever you will reduce your original inequality to this, then you know, basically understand how to, to do it. But to reduce it to this particular form, that would require some ingenuity, and that's why the problems are all about. And uh, well, that's why actually the whole course is about, to develop your creativity and ingenuity. Uh, well, don't forget everything is on unizor.com. Um, it's a free site, and uh, you are encouraged to register because that would enable um, your supervisor or a parent, maybe, or yourself, if you want to play this role, to enroll you in a particular topic, which will further enable you to take exams. Exams are important, because there is no explanation, uh, like I'm doing right now, uh, what's the solution? It's just an exam, and uh, you can take it as many times as you want, but that would really kind of... Um, uh, check the level of, of knowledge and expertise which you have developed. Thanks very much and good luck.